Chemistry and the Scientific Method, Video Lecture 2. Well, first of all, what is chemistry? What are we talking about when we talk about chemistry? Chemistry is the, structure of, the study of matter and the changes that it undergoes. So the stuff that things are made of and how we can change and alter that stuff. The basis of chemistry is the scientific method. The scientific method begins with making an observation. When you make an observation, you notice something about the world. We gather this information using the senses. So we do it by sight, by hearing, by tasting, feeling, etc. The second step is to ask a question. Questions are the most important thing in science. It's the basis of all science. When we ask a question, we're going to go through and provide some, perform some research to see if there's already an answer to our question. Next, we're going to develop a hypothesis. A hypothesis should fulfill three conditions. Number one, it must be based on previous knowledge. It must be a possible answer to our question, and it must be testable. A hypothesis that is not testable is useless. After we develop a hypothesis, we're going to test that hypothesis with an experiment. An experiment is a set of controlled observations that tests a hypothesis. We want to isolate one variable, a single variable. And a variable is something that changes throughout the experiment. We've got different types of variables. We have the independent variable and the dependent variable. The independent variable is the variable that the scientist wants to change. The dependent variable is a change as a result of a change in the, it says manipulated variable here, this should be independent variable, an independent variable. We hypothesize that increased studying leads to higher grades. Well, the increased studying would be the independent variable. The higher grades are the dependent variable. The higher grades depend on how much you study. If we look at this example, we're looking at how much, how fast it takes table salt to dissolve in hot water versus cold water, well, room temperature water. So looking at this data, we can determine the dependent and the independent variables above. Well, 5 grams of water and 5 grams of water are the same. These do not change. These are controlled variables. 100 milliliters of water. The volume of water is the same. These are also controlled variables. So what we're left with is 40, gra uh, 40 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius. The temperature the temperature is what we intended to change. This was our independent variable. Our dependent variable, our dependent variable is the time that it takes to dissolve. So if we were going to graph this data, if we were going to graph this data, we have our two axes and we'd have our line. Our y-axis is where we put our dependent variable. Our x-axis is where we put our independent variable. The way that I like to remember it is the dependent variable goes on this axis because we use it to write a D and our independent variable goes on the horizontal axis because that's the one we would use to draw an I. Our next step after we've gotten our done our doing our experiment is to collect and analyze our data and draw conclusions. Our data is going to be the results of our experiment. And if we just have a whole bunch of raw numbers, it doesn't help us very much. So 
we would organize it into tables, charts, and graphs, like we saw, like we saw in on this slide. When we have our data, data can either support or disprove a hypothesis. If our data supports our hypothesis, then we are going to continue to test our hypothesis with more experiments. If it is not support, if our hypothesis is not supported, we develop alternate hypotheses, test that with experiments, collect the data, and draw conclusions there. Now this data that we're collecting that we're going to use to support or disprove hypotheses can either be quantitative or qualitative data. Quantitative data is numerical information. It tells us how much, how big, how tall, how fast, things like 10 meters per second, 30 grams, 45 meters per second, etc. Qualitative data, descriptive data, tells us how something looks, feels, sounds, or tastes. The way that I remember this is quantitative. We see quantity. It's a number. The part of the scientific method is to communicate and collaborate with our work. Scientists collaborate. They work together. They talk. They do this because they want to increase the likelihood of a successful outcome. By all using the same basic type of method, scientists are able to work with people from other disciplines. For example, botany, plants, may study and work with somebody from zoology, which is animals. And both of them may work together with an ecologist, who in turn may need to look to a chemist to discuss what's going to discuss effects in the environment. In order to help each other work together and collaborate, scientists use peer review. They receive questions and criticisms from their peers. Their data is checked for accuracy and they receive comments and suggestions from other scientists. So peer review is basically subjecting an author's work or re research or ideas to the scrutiny of others who are experts in the same field. They want to be, they want to scrutinize it, they want to pick it apart or criticize. Finally, if we have a strongly supported hypothesis, we can develop a theory. A theory is a well-tested explanation for a broad set of observations. A theory only happens after a great deal of peer review. A theory is essentially our best explanation for something. This is different from a law, which is a generalized description which describes the behavior of matter. So scientific laws are the evidence used to support a conclusion. Scientific hypotheses and theories are our best attempts at explaining the behavior of the world. For example, if you drop a pencil or a book or drop anything that's heavier than air, it'll fall. This is generalized as the law of gravity. Notice it doesn't tell us what gravity is, but it just simply describes a behavior. Objects fall. If we were to do this scientifically, we'd make measurements about the speed of the fall and state the law as Newton did mathematically. That would be a theory. Isaac Newton knew what gravity did. He could describe it, but he could not explain why gravity did it. Even today, the topic of what gravity really is is an active topic for scientific discussion.